Okay, uh, first up, a reminder, we are shipping. Don't forget when you place an order on Adafruit.com, you are helping us, an open source hardware company in New York City. We are doing this thing, shipping safe and smart for you. We still have our buy one, give one for Black Girls Code going on. By the way, congratulations, Black Girls Code. Nissan uh, featured them in the Vet Awards, and it was an amazing ad for an amazing group doing fantastic work. We're very happy that we're able to deliver Circuit Playground Expresses. When you buy one, we send one to them. It's that easy. All right, first up. Okay, first up, uh, coming soon, it's a nice math print mask. I thought this was a funny design uh, available from one of the mask uh, makers that we get masks from. It's got like little adjustable ear loops and it's made out of two layers. Um, the outer layer is kind of a thick cotton and the inner layer is a comfy cotton. And then in between, you can put a filter. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show, I'll show that off. So this is like the kind of the, the thicker uh, uh, form setting material. So it's kind of like a um, cotton. It feels like it might be, um, you know, water uh, treated um, to prevent moisture. And then um, inside here, there's like a really soft but thick cotton layer. And then it comes with two of these PM 2.5 uh, filtering inserts. And so you can like slide this in and replace this once a week. This is, you know, more for, uh, you know, designed for people who are, you know, bicycling outside or there's some air pollution. You don't really need this um, if you're just trying to keep your coughs and sneezes in. But it's another layer of filtering. Um, and then you've got the soft cotton and you've got the um, stiff filter in the center and then this holds the outside and it's got some like cool sort of differential equation type math printed on the outside. So it's yeah. my math mask. I like wearing this one, so. Yeah, masks are in the news and uh, I can tell you that Lady Ada wears this one every day at the Ada for Factory when we're out in New York and when we're in uh, safe and smart crowd situations where it's outdoors. So we've been doing this, and it is beta tested by Lady Ada herself. I liked it, yeah. Okay, next up. Next up, we've got an update to uh, the Unicorn uh, Fat from Pimeroni. They have updated it to, instead of using, um, I think, NeoPixels or something on the previous version, now it has two uh, either I2C or SPI RGB LED drivers. It's got four buttons on the front, and it's got, uh, I think, like 11 by seven uh, controllable LEDs, or maybe more than that. Hold on, let me see. Sorry, 17 by seven LEDs. So let's oh, look on um, the overhead. So this is it running a demo. Um, good to... Nothing messes up overhead cameras. No, they don't like the bright LEDs. Yeah. Um, but you can see this is kind of running like a little uh, animation demo. Um, so each LED can have, I think, probably 16-bit or 24-bit color. Um, the frame rate update is very fast. It seems to be like, you know, at least 30 frames per second. You can draw little animations and then you get uh, four buttons on here and here. It's fully assembled, so you can just uh, plug it right into um, your Raspberry Pi. It works with any Raspberry Pi with a 2 by 20 header and the library is in Python. Okay, next up. Next up, we have a update, uh, big sister to um, the H3, sorry, so the List331, which we put in a few weeks ago, uh, this time we have the H3 List331. And this is a really interesting ultra high range accelerometer. So usually accelerometers go to like, you know, plus or minus 2, 4, 6, 8, maybe 16 or 32 Gs. Um, well, this one goes up to, let's see, go to the back, it goes to, I think, one plus or minus 100 plus or minus 200 plus or minus 400 g's so this is for like rocketry or like physics experiments like this what isn't what you would use for everyday accelerometer like human motion this is for like i'm sending something into a very fast thing that is then going to crash and i want to be able to uh capture that high g um measurement so uh, i'll show it to you also on the overhead it comes with stemma QT connector, so you can just plug and play it into um, any of your dev boards, Raspberry Pi or Arduino. We have CircuitPython code and an Arduino library. Uh, one thing I do want to note is because it's a very high range accelerometer, um, 
it's going to be a little noisy on the G range. Like, you, you know, usually there's like a 1% you know, noise on an accelerometer, but you don't notice it because it's like off in the 0.001 G um, position. But because this is a you know, 200 Gs or 100 Gs, you're gonna see some fluctuations of about one G at because of that, just the noise of the precision of the sensor. The sensor is not designed for measuring small differences. It's meant for measuring very large distance uh, differences in G forces. And so just be aware of that when you plug it in, you'll wanna use maybe the low pass filter capability. You might wanna do your own filtering or offset calculations, um, but you're not gonna get like this beautiful zero, zero, one G measurement when it's not moving, you're going to see these fluctuations. Um, but that just means that when you do get to like 100G, 200G, 400G, uh, those fluctuations will be, you know, two digits off of your um, you know, desired range. So uh, that's the only thing to watch out for. I think that's kind of shocked me when I first plugged in. I was like, oh my goodness, it's like so noisy. And then I realized like, oh yeah, of course it is. It's, you know, got a hundred times the range. Okay. And um, next up, ready? Yep. Okay. Oh, I forgot to bring in my power adapter. No. Hold on, please. Well, one second. Let me see. I've got videos of this. It's these really cool. Um. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll just uh, I'll just show it. I'll do the video. Okay. So this is um, some analog LED neon strips um, that come in sort of like an enclosed weather-resistant silicone casing. Um, these are not neopixels. They're analog. LED strips, you can tell because there's five wires. Um, the uh, black wire is actually plus 12 volts. Uh, the green wire is for the green LED component, the red wire for the red LED component, the blue for the blue LED component. And then these are RGBW, they have a white LED component. And that's why there's two versions. One is a cool white okay. LED and one is a warm white LED. I actually can't tell, um, but in person you can. So, you know, if you want to have, um, you know, an accent lighting that has white uh, LEDs uh, color. It's kind of hard to mix RGB. It never quite comes out like as a pure white, especially if you're looking for a warm or cool color. Um, and so with this, you have a separate set of LED diodes that gives you um, the white light. So you can have any color mix. You cannot individually address them, but you can uh, address the whole strip. And I'll show just the raw strip. Yeah. Hold on, I got so many demos. I've got all the demos here. Okay. Okay, so let's get this to lock. Okay. So um, the side has got this kind of like grooved silicone. Um, and the the sides and the bottom are are not uh, translucent, they're opaque. And this is kind of like grooved. I think so you can like fit this into like architectural lighting. Like you want to put this in, in some foam or you want to somehow like adhese it to a surface. So you've got a lot of surface area on both these sides. And this is the part that glows and it glows very uniformly. Um, we kind of call these RGB LED neon because they have a kind of a uniform neon glow, um, but they're not um, made out of glass. So you can like flexibly, you know, move them around and they don't stay in the position so if you if you do want to um, put it into an unusual shape you'll just have to um, put fixture it somehow either with glue or nails or what have you and then just to, as a reminder it's an analog LED strip it's a 12 volt analog LED strip you'll have to PWM the LEDs and all the LEDs on the strip change at once so you can not individually address it okay all right Next up, we got more blinkies. Yes. Okay. So next up is um, hold on, let me put this in. So this is uh, this is addressable. So these are addressable three watt neopixel like chunks of aluminum PCB material. They've got a gigantic three watt LED, and they have a WS twenty eight eleven, which is like the SOIC chip version of uh, NeoPixel that's all integrated, except it's separated here because, you know, if you're driving a chip at three watts, you're not gonna be able to embed a uh, microcontroller inside of it. Uh, and it has some uh, driver chips as well. Uh, it comes, uh, you, know, you can plug and play them together. They each come with a JST-SM on the end. 
uh, and then I can show them. They're super bright. On the overhead. <laughs> they're like incredibly bright. Yeah. Um, they're just wow. super bright. And uh, I don't even know if this is full brightness, but basically it is blinding. Like Neopix is already very Yeah, bright. I have to look away from over here when I'm doing this. It's kind of funny. You can also see it like in the reflection. Yeah. Um, this is cool. You can see it light me up. Yeah, um, so the bottom, yeah. it's got aluminum backed PCB, so it's nice. So it has some thermal relief. Yeah, um, like, there's two mounting holes. See, yeah, but hold them up again. Yeah, look at these. Yeah, it's, it's very nice, nice and bright. They're really it's, bright. It's bright. Um, so yeah. Very bright uh, dots. Uh, just be aware, you know, each one can draw up to like half an amp almost. Um, so when you power these, you'll just, you know, if you want to power a lot, you'll need to have a really good 5 volt power supply. Other than that, they're NeoPixel compatible. This is just running the NeoPixel demo. Works just fine. Okay. All right. And then um, last but not least, the star of the show tonight, besides the Adafruit community, I'll read it for team members. A new lady data is this. Yay, it's a mini boost. Um, this is a small boost converter that is surprisingly powerful for the size and price. It's a. Um, uh, you want to go to which one? The one? one you just. Uh, this one? Nope. Can I guess one? That one, yeah, because I just see the text. So uh, VN can be two to five volts. Um, although, you know, to get the one amp out, I think you need to have like at least three and a half volts in. The output is set to be five volts, although we give you actually it's kind of like 5.2 volts. We give you a little bit higher than five because there's often a uh, voltage drop on wires when you're powering things. Um, but you can get one amp max out of this. Uh, at two volts, I think you can get like 300 or 400 milliamps out. Uh, three volts, you can get like, you know, maybe 600, 700. But once you get to like a LiPo range, you can get an amp out. Um, if it's a fresh LiPo, you can get like, you know, even amp, 1.4 amps. Uh, so it's quite a powerful little chip. It's really fully integrated. Basically, just have an inductor, a bunch of 22 microfarad caps, and then the feedback resistor. There's an enable pin. When you uh, bring the enable pin low, it'll actually completely disconnect the output. So that's great for a power switch. You don't have to like worry about feed through. Um, but it's a great little booster. So you know, if you've got a couple of alkalines or nickel metal hydrides or a lipo battery, this is a perfect way to boost it up to get five volts. So you can drive you know, Raspberry Pi Zero and maybe a couple accessories. Um, the demo I have, to see if it still works, is uh, having it power these uh, ginormous NeoPixels. So let me see if I can get it to uh, show the text. So um, you yeah, can see. Oh, I was going to just zoom in. Oh, yeah. Uh, so you Powers. can see here, you know, running the plain demo. Um, I've got the, the booster here. And it's plugged into, you know, a LiPo battery. And it's it's powering the three ginormous 3 watt NeoPixels, giving it a nice, you know, 5.1 volts. This is an inexpensive way to just like toss in, um, you know, a five volt, if you want to connect to five volt sensors or NeoPixels that you can drive them at 3.5 volts, but you won't get uh, the best color. And one of the things to note is you can see uh, when all the LEDs are on, it goes up to 1.3 amps. But it has no problem. It can absolutely supply 1.3 amps even off of a not so large LiPo. This is only a 1.2 uh, amp hour battery. And it has no problem uh, supplying it. Um, yeah, it doesn't get too hot. It's a really nice fully integrated boost converter. Uh, and for people who, you know, they want it something like a power boost, but they want it much smaller, chips have improved, um, pick this up. It's really small. You can integrate it into any product or project you'd like. Okay. With that, that's new products. Yay! 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 Yay!